aspiring biologist and hopefully a future herpetologist. And today we are over here at the Roseville Expo with Steve, the founder and owner of Geckos Etc. So I've been breeding reptiles for a very long time. I've had reptiles as pets ever since I was four years old. Um, I've had uh, all kinds of animals all over the years. Um, you know, kind of in the process of my reptile evolution, eventually settled on leopard geckos uh, as kind of the, the starting place. But then since then, we've diversified a lot and have many other species, including fat tail geckos, knob tail geckos, western hognose snakes, California king snakes, uh, Mexican black king snakes. Um, and uh, lots of lots of good stuff. So yeah, I think it's so awesome that you are able to focus on like one niche and then still just branch out and do a bunch of stuff. So definitely, I get really inspired from just seeing how you do things. Thanks. Um, yeah. The main reason that I actually wanted to be able to talk to you is because you have something that is <clears throat> so different, and he actually has albino Mexican black king snakes. But uh, some people, I was doing a little bit of research, think that it's just a hybrid of the. Um, Cow King, a uh, blizzard, or just the high whites. And after seeing them in person, it's the main reason we have to make this video because they are definitely not the same. Um, so you can go ahead and tell us a little bit more about that and how you found it and why it's so cool. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so um, there's a breeder in Southern California named Randy Wright. Okay. Um, he's a long time breeder. He's been breeding, he's one of the original people to breed uh, a lot of species. Like, uh, you know, he was first, first person to breed albino, um, whitewater. Uh, rosy boas and, and other species that you know, he was the first person to be uh, captive breeding them, one of the pioneers of the reptile industry. Um, so anyway, friend, a good friend of ours, and you know, every time when I would go to his tables at the reptile shows, I'd always you know, look at his snakes, and when I found he was getting out of, of uh, reptile breeding when he was retiring, I uh, you know, kind of said, okay, there's certain, certain of your bloodlines that I want to preserve and make sure that I can keep them. Um, you know, I always appreciated his uh, Mexican black king snakes in particular mm -hmm. that were just, you know, so super black. Just, just some of the best Mexican black king snakes. Black just case. jet black, yeah. yeah. And he'd been selectively breeding them for years. You know, Mexican, Mexican black king snake babies vary a lot in the um, amount of white that they can have. Yeah, some of them have like under so, the chin. Yeah, a lot of them have it under yeah. the chin, but some of them can have some degree of white throughout the body. Okay. And usually that fades out as they age. Um, and, you know, usually adults are, are, are solid black, but okay. you know, a friend of mine, he has uh, some adults that, you know, are, have a lot of white in them as adults, and it's just differences in, um, in nature. You know, some of them are solid black, some of them have a good amount of, of white a little bit in, of in nature, <laughs> and then in captivity, you can selectively breed that to make them even black. Um, and the Red Wright had done, you know, many generations of selective breeding on him, just always picking the blackest ones to be the next generation of breeders. So I always liked his Mexican Black Kings things. I always thought they were the best of the best. So I bought a group of them from him. And, uh, you know, when I bred them, my first year breeding them, um, I ended up hatching out one albino. Oh my gosh, um, happened on your first year? In the first, that is first so year lucky. of breeding them, it was uh, quite yeah. a surprise. So um, anyway, we, you know, obviously you know, knew it was something special. Mm -hmm. And uh, took it and then have since uh, refined it and, and That's really awesome. outcrossed it and, and bred it. And, um, you know, uh, we've done well with them, and uh, you know this was our first year to be offering the albino Mexican black snakes for sale. Wow, so this is the first year that you're actually selling them. To, uh, you're actually for sale this year. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah. I can show you some albino Mexican black king snakes. We also can look at some of the hets too. Um, so that's one of our albinos. This is a. This head a male. is so cute and pink. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that! Yeah, so I mean, That's amazing. It, you know, our our adults, you know, the adults that are producing these, are are huge. You know, they are uh, you know, five to six feet long. You know, they are definitely much larger than a California king snake. Uh, so they are MBKs. They are. They, they they check all the boxes for being MBK. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. You know, of our adults are are that is so you know, cool. five to six feet long, mm -hmm. solid black. Um, yeah. You know, let's look at some of the heads. You know, they is are... there a visual difference between the heads and um, just the normal black ones? Not at all. No. All right. I mean, you wouldn't be able to, dish, uh, you wouldn't discern be able to tell this. The I mean, that's gotcha. that is a super black head albino. Oh. Oh, he's hungry. <laughs> okay. Well. King snakes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
okay, well. King snakes, everybody. <laughs> Can I eat you? Yep. So, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> super black. It's no big deal. Uh, head albino, so. <laughs> that's awesome. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. Trying to see if there's food around. Yep. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I taste good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get fed this week. So.